Dan and Dion coming to you from the Combine 2023, which is much more fascinating than it's been in years past for us because the Bears are in control with the number one overall pick. Yeah, Dan, I said that you could feel the juice almost in the first hour that you got to Indianapolis yeah. from people around the league being very fascinated about where the Bears stand and what they can do over the next eight or nine weeks here. This is a truly landmark opportunity for the Bears, and I think you feel that also from Ryan Pulse, the yeah. guy who's at the steering wheel of all of this, of understanding, hey, look, I've got a lot of resources, a lot of flexibility, a lot of options. I said on our Take the North podcast that it's almost too many options. To I some know, extent, like a I kid know. walking into an ice cream store with like 90 flavors, you're like, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this, and you want to do it all, yes. and now you got to try to figure out which one fits. But unlike an ice cream shop, you cannot have order regret in this moment. Like, you have to pick the right thing the first time. I did notice a major difference with polls. Remember last year when he walked into that room and he saw all the mics on the, on the table? He's like, whoa, not in Kansas City anymore. Right. And then today I felt like he walked in like chest out like we are here and we are not going to screw around I, you look i think there's a a confidence yeah that he's exuding i think there's a comfort he's exuding and then there's just this eagerness i mean he said yeah. it in his own words that this is a front office person's dream it's hard to sleep to, right now that was my favorite number, line. <laughs> to have the number one pick to have you know all this uh capital and free agency to, to do a lot of what you want to do you're not yeah. gonna be able to do everything you want to do but so there's an opportunity here, and I think the Bears need to, to wrap their arms around that opportunity. I think they need to have a vision. I think you still feel a connection in terms of the vision they're setting, mm -hmm. front office coaching staff, and marrying those two things together. Um, and with an understanding that you're going to have to be adaptable, you yeah. know, that things oh, are going to yeah. shift and turn, right? Tuesday morning when the, the, the Washington Commanders put the franchise tag under Ron Payne, you go back to your free agent board and you say, okay, one not defensive getting tackle him. off the right. board. Right? Yeah, let's, right. let's adjust. Let's see what else is there in free agency. If we don't feel like the value is there, then maybe we kick it forward mm -hmm. to April in the draft. And I think Ryan was very straightforward today also in just saying, look, look, look this is why we marry free agency yeah. and the draft. Yeah. Because you have yeah. to know what's available in both to be able to make wise smart decisions. And this week they will be just gathering as much information as they can, which you know that's what they do every single year. But you do it with a different perspective now, right? Because you feel like you, what you're gleaning can actually impact your franchise. And because they have that power, you know, everyone talks about, and he even said, and in a dream world, of course, we're going to trade back and we're going to get right. much more capital for that. But I don't want them to go back that far, Dan. Well, and he's still trying to figure that out. Right. And I said, I, I joked because we, you, Ryan Pace had clouds. Of course. Right? <laughs> okay. Ryan yes. Poles has value buckets. Right. right. And he gave us a color-coded system now, right? He gave us blue, red, gold, orange, gray in yes. that order. So this is where you're looking as a, as a general manager and you're saying, do we need to leave the first night of the draft with a blue player? Are we willing to leave with our best player being a red player if we get so much back in right. a trade that we've got future first round picks in 2024 and 2025 that we can maybe turn those guys into blue players. So he's got to do this, this, you know, risk reward assessment on every single thing he does. And to your point, he's got to know where that floor is and where he's going to draw it. And so I think he's still feeling that out. I think he kind of indicated that, Hey, they're going to get back after this week is over and realign some things and have discussions and then kind of share the chatter that they heard from other teams and who right. might want to come trade for that number one pick. And then ultimately, I think we're all expecting them at some point to trade that number one pick. I did not feel like it was breaking news when ESPN said that the Bears are entertaining the thought of trading right. the number one. I think we all knew that. I did feel like he gave maybe a slight more vote of confidence to Justin Fields today. It, it did feel like the plan is for him to be our quarterback, and, and they're not going to second-guess that at this point. Well, and Matt Eberflus doubled down on that to some extent and said, we like the path Justin's on. I think they've been appropriately candid yeah. in their assessment of Justin and saying, look, like the guy showed us athletic brilliance. He showed us playmaking explosion. He, he showed us leadership intangibles that, that tell you, okay, there's something here. Now we need to see progress in very key areas. And, and to hear Matt Eberflus on Tuesday afternoon just say, like, there are areas of, of – the game where Justin just needs to be quicker, right? Mm -hmm. He's got to make decisions faster. He's got to understand that on in certain situations, we don't want you taking off and running and using right. valuable mental and physical fuel to try to make a play happen when you can just take a six yard right. check down to a running back and move on and, and see the next play. So they want to see growth in Justin, but I think there's enough there that they believe they can push him in the right direction. Um, they didn't say 110% Justin is our starting quarterback in right. week one, but I think everyone expects that to be the case. I don't know what you made of Ryan being pressed on what would it take to be blown away. He gave a pretty thorough answer. He did, but he also said that the list is long. Like the criteria for that to make that yeah. move is a very, it is ideal. It is that like, 
I think it would be a far different, I've discussed this with other reporters, it would be a far different draft if Caleb Williams was available, right? right? I feel like then you would have to ask that question a little bit more. Right. Because that, he genuinely seems like the complete package, but we're not at that point right now. And the Bears have so many needs. It feels like if they could say quarterback isn't one of them, that's actually putting them in a better oh, yeah. position. No question. And, and I've always been of the belief that if you can compile and a trade, if you trade back to number one and you can compile future trade assets, yes, future yes, draft yes. assets that next year, Caleb Williams and Drake may come out and you say, oh, we want to go we, get one of those guys right, instead. Right. Well, hopefully you've got a, a wallet that yes. allows you to go spend and trade up. Some of the chatter, Dan, that you hear this week in Indy about Bryce Young is it's the same stuff that we are aware of, but just the size. It yeah. scares a lot of people. He's, you know, uh, shorter than six feet, probably. He's 180 pounds. Like, he's probably going to weigh in at 200 pounds, but that's uh, just inflated generous, for right. the combine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll see where it goes. People don't know if he can withstand the beating. As a quarterback, people in the league are in love with who he is. Like, right. the, the way he processes, the, how, how cerebral he is, the aptitude he has, it's brilliant stuff. But if that's only going to keep you around for a season and a half, what what good is it if you're right. if you're hurt and you're broken and all those things? Yeah, I talked to a reporter who covered Justin in college from Columbus, and he just said, "I I think he is going to be the guy." He said he's just such he's got so many intangibles about him, and he's a great leader and a great person. But a lot of that was missed because you have to remember, like towards the end of his college was COVID, right? So that interaction wasn't there, and so we're still getting to know him, of course. But to have someone from the past be like i think he is the, like i truly right. think he is the guy well there's there's certainly something in there and we've yeah, talked forever yeah. about the dna and now look like i think this is an awesome test yeah. 2023 they're going to get him some support they're going to get him a better defense he's going to have a better offensive line hopefully mm -hmm. there's going to be some weapons added to the offense and now you say okay show us who you are as a quarterback and we get to this time next year and i i think the gray area well, you know, it's maybe this size right, gray right, area, right. and it'll come down here, and you'll be like, "There's much less gray area. We know who he is." And I think Justin, of all people, is is super eager to take that test, and that uh, says a lot about him. I like he, he hasn't been thin-skinned about any of this. No, not at all. How about Matt Eberflus saying every one of the spots in the offensive line is up for grabs? <laughs> I was like, "Well, well, that says a lot about what Justin had to deal with this last year." Well, look, I, I you know, the question was, "Is there anything that's solid on your offensive line?" He's like, He's "Look, we're going to basically no. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're going to want our guys to compete, and that's not a surprise. You know, no. they, they need." to figure out what that group of five looks like. And, and Poles, an offensive lineman at heart, understands that it takes more than five, right? Yeah. That you need depth, that you need quality guys that can play inside and out because when those injury bugs bite and things happen, you've got to reshuffle. And they just, they reshuffled too much in 2022. Yeah. They didn't do a good enough job up front. And now they've got to find a way to to give Justin a greater chance of succeeding. I mean, this is, this is I, like I say, you can feel the juice in this, mm -hmm. in this environment for who the Bears are in this stage of their process. As we hear from, start to hear from players this week, do you think you'll get an indication of guys' personalities that would fit in the culture and the climate <laughs> in Chicago? Uh, you know, this is such a structured event that yeah. I think guys are very rehearsed. I think it's okay. hard to draw that out. It's particularly in our case when we're in front of podiums with the guys, it's a little bit less of a, a feel that right. you can get otherwise. But I did think it was notable that Matt Eberflus said, look, I want I want to know this is not for room. everybody. Yeah. The hits principle and the I way we do things is not too. for it's everybody. It's not for everybody. So yeah. do you want to sign up for this? And can we feel that out in our 15-minute interviews with you? Can we like get a sense of your passion, mm -hmm. your, your love of the game, those things that are, are going to be needed to succeed in the Bears system? Um, you know, there's an increase in, in teams that don't send their coaching staffs down here. I think yeah. it's up to five this yeah. year, including yeah. the Packers. Yeah. Uh, Matt was very emphatic in saying, look, there's a lot at stake for us no this offseason it's important for us to be here and for him to be a part of that process i think is huge because he does know who's going to fit in his locker room but also who's going to fit into what he expects of them like who's going to rise to the occasion of what he expects of them you get a lot of uh, uh, uh of other coaches involved in that process as well this week and so they'll have an opportunity not just to watch the on-field drills but to get a feel for those things um again i you know matt said it today 58 days till the draft starts, which gets us to about 60 days until the draft is over. This is an eventful stretch here, you know, and it's going to be fun to, to monitor all the ebbs and flows along the way. I kind of want to run the 40. Yeah. It's open for I you. Don't, no, I don't. I don't. Yeah, it would, do I would it. embarrass myself. Right down this hallway. <laughs> I'm I mean, you, not you, doing that. you got to get on the road to get back to Chicago. You can run to your car. We'll time it. <laughs> I'm not doing it. And for those reasons, I'm out. <laughs> I'll do the vertical right here on this pole. Do it, Dan, we, we can mark it. <laughs>